All right, so starting out with light as a wave. So in essence, light or radiation carries energy from place to place. Um, and it's a wave that oscillates as it travels. And when you think of a wave, you might think of like a wave in the ocean, a water wave, right? Or you might think of throwing a stone into a pond and it creates a ripple and that wave propagates through space. And so it actually carries energy from the falling stone, the kinetic energy that the stone brought into the pond, um, the wave carries it across the surface of the pond. Light does exactly the same thing, except for instead of having a physical medium that it oscillates back and forth, it oscillates back and forth in the electric and magnetic fields that permeate all space. If that doesn't make sense, it's okay. Um, this is a deeper physics concept, but the most important things that we'll focus on today are the properties of the wave. So the details of the connection to electric and magnetic fields isn't particularly important to us, but this image is showing that the red is an oscillation in an electric field and the blue is an oscillation in the magnetic field. And those happen in perpendicular directions that are also perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. So if I have a wave moving into the camera, then it's, it would oscillate the electric field up and down and it would oscillate the magnetic field side to side or in any other way, as long as they are always perpendicular. All right, so that's what we mean when we say light is a wave and waves have characteristic properties that we can measure. Um, here's uh, the wave description that I'm going to refer to most of the time where V denotes the direction of motion for light. So this could be a wave, an electromagnetic light wave traveling to the right across the screen and it's oscillating the electric field up and down and that's what the red envelope is indicating. So the important characteristics that we can measure here as we're looking at this, um, essentially you could think of this as a graph where both dimensions are space dimensions. So we're measuring a distance here as the wave travels and we're measuring a uh, amplitude here um, as it oscillates the electric field. And the first quantity of interest is the wavelength, which is denoted by Greek letter lambda. This is the distance between the high points or the low points of a wave. So measuring from peak to peak or trough to trough. This is similar to how we measured period for the Cepheid variables, except since we're measuring in space, then that means that this has units of distance, All right? So where the period have, had units of time, this has units, this wavelength has units of distance. All right, the amplitude A is the maximum height of the wave um, as measured from its uh, kind of zero point, its average. Uh, we're not gonna deal that much with the amplitude. It's not particularly important for our purposes. And then the frequency is how many times per second a wave repeats. So that means that going from, for example, peak to peak, if this took um, 100 picoseconds to go from the peak of a wave to another peak of a wave, that would be the frequency. So you can measure this wave both in terms of distance and in terms of time, but we'll usually refer to the distance measurement, to the wavelength. And then finally, the speed is just how fast the wave is moving. And these three quantities, wavelength, frequency, and speed are all related to each other by this equation, V equals F lambda. The speed of a wave is equal to the frequency of the wave times its wavelength. All right. So this relationship, um, the speed is always constant because the speed of light in a vacuum is constant. It never changes. Uh, if it goes through a very dense medium, it can slow down. But if we ignore that part and we think about the mostly vacuum of space, the speed is constant. And so that means that the fre frequency and wavelength have to be inversely proportional to each other. If I change the frequency, then the wavelength has to change in response in order to keep that speed the same. So um, radio is one of the types of light. It is a long wavelength type of light. Um, so let's say that we have two radio stations, KKNX and KLCC. And let's say that they have different frequencies that they emit at, um, which of these stations would have the longer wavelength 
based on what you see about the frequency. So the answer is A, K, K, and X. Uh, the longer wavelength station, uh, we can think of that as having a lower frequency. It makes a peak less often than the short wavelength KLCC station. So KLCC has here a short wavelength, a high frequency of oscillation, and KKNX has a low frequency of oscillation and therefore a longer wavelength. We can think about this in terms of our equation, V equals F lambda, because if the speed of light is constant, then the right-hand side of our equation, F times lambda, has to be the same for both radio stations. That means if KKNX has a low frequency, it has to have a large, long wavelength. And if KLCC has a high frequency uh, wave, then it has to have a short wavelength. 